Hello everybody, Abby here with Scrap and Abby, and I am going to be doing the paper napkin transfer step-by-step -step tutorial for you ladies today. This of course is not an original idea of mine. This has been around for a really long time. I've just never had the opportunity to actually kind of make a tutorial or do a project on my own YouTube channel. So that's what I'm doing today just to kind of share with you, just in case there's anybody new to crafting or maybe new on YouTube that doesn't know that this is something really fun you can do. Now I will be including a link in the description box below for the YouTube channel that I watched quite some time ago where I learned how to do this process. I want to make sure I'm giving her proper credit because that is where I learned how to do it but I really wanted to do one on my own channel as well and just kind of share some different projects that I've created using the napkins once I transfer them onto some cardstock. So at the end of the video I'll share some really cool projects that I've already made for you. So as you can see, this is a pile of some really fun and really pretty, beautiful napkins that I've hauled from the Dollar Tree. And you can get um, a couple different sizes. You can get the, you know, the dessert size, and this is more like the dinner, you know, meal size um, napkin. And they had some, just some beautiful patterns and colors um, from the napkins at the Dollar Tree. I was really, really surprised at the beautiful patterns and colors and variety that they had. I mean, um, you know, the Dollar Tree that I used to go to in Oregon, where I lit, I just moved from, they must, the Dollar Tree there must have had at least 40 different styles, you know, ranging from kid up to these really gorgeous, you know, floral print napkins. And then, of course, these really fun ones that I see every summer from them with the pink flamingos. These are just awesome. And since we now live in Florida, I thought these would be really appropriate to use for some projects I'm working on. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you really quickly a couple of the different napkins that I've already transferred and then we'll get right to the tutorial and share with you what items you'll need to do this. Really, really super simple. So starting with the pink flamingos, I used some basic white heavy card stock because I'm going to be making some different Florida flip books um, out of these for a couple um, little girls that um, are in our family. And this is these turned out really, really cute. So I already cut these down to the size I needed and it has this really nice can hear that this really nice almost fabric material texture to it it's just really really pretty so that was a really easy to transfer onto the white um, heavy duty cardstock the next one is this napkin set here this I just used the base of actually all of mine other than the pink flamingo are on some basil cardstock because I really wanted to have that texture that you see right there I wanted that because these are going to be um, turned into a variety of different things some Midori covers I'm making for myself some cards junk books things of that nature so I wanted the inside to have a really nice texture. You, of course, can use whatever kind of paper you want. And so it just turned out really nicely onto the cardstock. And this is that napkin here. Then the next one I've already used, which is actually going to be for the samples I'm going to share with you at the end of the video, is from this really gorgeous Magnolia pack of napkins. And this one here is just a little bit shy of being 12 by 12 because I cut it down a little bit. And then this is half of the sheet that's left that I use for the projects I'll share at the end. And then the last one, which I also have in the dessert size napkin, but I used the dinner size for this sample. This is a beautiful script with the butterfly and the florals on there. I love it. It's so beautiful. This one I'm going to turn into one of my um, Adori Traveler Notebook um, inserts. So this is going to be a fun video I'll do separately for my planner stuff, but just to kind of share with you. So the two that I'm going to be showing you um, on camera are from these uh, packages here. And I'm really wishing I would have bought two of these, or at least a couple more of these, because the Dollar Tree um, here in my area in Florida, they don't have this particular pattern. And I really wish I would have bought more because these are absolutely beautiful. So we're going to be using these. So in addition to the napkins that you're going to use, which can be from anywhere you can find, you're of course going to need an iron. This is um, just a Proctor Silex. It was like, I don't know, 10, 12 bucks at Walmart, I think. This is just, I use it strictly for crafting. So if you have an iron that you use and you only have one and you use it to actually iron your clothes, you're going to want to make sure that you're being very careful to not get the plastic on your iron or else it'll get on there and, and not... You don't want to use it on your clothes after that. And then, of course, you're going to need some plastic wrap. This is going to be acting as the medium to transfer the napkin to the cardstock. This is just some cheap plastic wrap that I got from the Dollar Tree. And then, of course, you're going to need your work surface. You can either use, um, like my table is a wood um, farm table, and you can use an ironing board if you want. You can also use 
me show you this other sample I have here. I do have just like a cutting board that I got from Goodwill. I use it for obviously other crafting reasons. I used that for the first part and then I really wanted to try it on my craft table with some other um, to kind of get, I needed a little bit bigger surface than my cutting board was. So what I'm using is just this purple towel that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to lay this down onto my craft table. If you have like a, you know, plastic table or, you know, something or more delicate table and you don't want the heat to kind of go through, you don't want to really, you're probably going to want to put a different kind of a buffer down, you know, using a cutting board or more, you know, thicker towels. You don't want to do this on one of your cutting mats, the self-healing mats, because it, they will melt. So I never already did this with all those samples I shared with you already. Let me turn this upside down here or the other direction. Anyway, um, so I already shared with you and I did it on my table and it didn't make my table very hot at all and it cooled off in just a couple minutes. It was, you know, I could touch it when I was done. It wasn't like it was super hot or anything. And the next thing you're going to need is the, um, the next layer of protection is you can use parchment paper, which is what I'm going to use and that is what this, um, the lady in her YouTube tutorial that I saw, that's what she used, and it worked better for me. You can also use white cardstock, which I did use before, and worked just fine, but I'm gonna use a couple different sheets of this parchment paper. This is what you use to put on your cookie sheets for baking. You can find it, you know, in the baking section, you know, at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, things like that. And of course, you're gonna want your paper that you're going to be putting your napkins on. Now, I've already cut my cardstock down to the appropriate size I need for my projects. These are also going to be some more of that basil cardstock, as you can see, because it's got that really nice linen texture, and I want that for the inside of this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, just kind of show with you on this first one here. I went ahead and already cut my napkin down to the half size I need for this project. Of course, you can leave it the full size if you wanna do a full sheet like I did earlier, and it's really important Important that you take this uh, backing off. Most napkins have at least a one ply, some have, most of them have two, and some of your more plush ones have a three ply. So you want to just kind of carefully pull this off the back of your napkin. I keep these because these are great to use as texture on another project for like on canvas or something like that. So I kept all of mine in a pile from the prior samples I shared with you right here. So I'm going to keep those and I'll share those in a different video. And then of course, um, let's go ahead and get this one over here. We'll do this one first. So I'm gonna make sure, because I wanted to make, um, I wanted the texture paper, I'm gonna make sure that that is on face down because I want the napkin to go on the smooth side as far as the print. And then I'm just gonna lay this over. Now of course this napkin is a little bit larger than my cardstock that I have, which is totally fine. That's what I want because I can cut around it. That way I make sure that I have the whole piece of the cardstock covered. And then I'm going to kind of lay this over a little bit overlapping because I don't want, let me show you real close here. You see that little white edge right down there? That's just from, you know, the end, end of the napkin when it was being printed. I want that to hang off because I want the bottom of the card to be the actual, you know, have some color. So I'm going to lay that down like that. But then we're going to put the plastic wrap down first. I apologize. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So I'm just going to tear a sheet off. We use the Costco wrap for our inner kitchen, and I have to tell you, this cheaper stuff, it really is a lot more difficult to kind of cut, I feel, because it's so thin. But I don't want to use, you know, expensive stuff for a craft project. So we're going to tear that. And you want your plastic wrap to be bigger than the paper that you're using to transfer the napkin onto, because you want to allow for some room for it to kind of shrink up and actually melt, you know, to the cardstock with the napkin. So I'm gonna get that as flat, there we go, as flat as you possibly can. And then next we're gonna put the napkin down on top and then we're just gonna make sure it's over like that, there we go. And then I'm going to take my parchment paper or you can use cardstock as I mentioned, or art paper, and put that on top. So you wanna make sure that your papers, that you whatever it is you use to cover your napkin and plastic wrap with, overlaps it so you can kind of go, make sure you're getting to the edges nicely to kind of get that really good seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and my iron is on the highest setting it can be on. Of course it has no water in it because you don't want any type of steam for this project and you just wanna go over the napkin. And this can take anywhere from one to three minutes. I think the longest for me when I use um, cardstock instead of the parchment paper took about three to four minutes I think and that's probably because I had um, probably one too many sheets protecting it and it took a little bit longer for the iron the heat of the iron to go through and melt that. So 
So I'm just going to kind of go over like this. And this is what I was mentioning about you want to make sure that the plastic wrap you're using is covered with the parchment or your cardstock. That way it doesn't get onto your iron and stick to your iron. So I'm just going to kind of work really hard, uh, you know, really good press on the edges, kind of focusing there more just to make sure those edges are nice and sealed tightly. And if when you lift this up, if it looks like it's peeling away or you start to trim away the cards, the excess napkin and plastic wrap and it starts to peel up, all you have to do is just put it down and repeat this process and focus on that area that's lifting up. It's not a big deal. And this is a really inexpensive way to create your own custom cardstock to make for projects. So if you can't afford a lot of the, you know, Graphic 45 and Prima and Tim Holtz, because those paper packs are gorgeous and beautiful, and of course I have them, but they can be pretty expensive. And if you're on a budget for crafting, this is a really good way to come up with some cardstock where you don't have to, um, you know, put out a lot of money for that. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this back. Okay, and we're going to go just a little bit longer on that corner because it is not down quite all the way. So just to make this part not too long, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for you guys. And I'll be back once I get this completely sealed. See you in just a minute. Okay, ladies, I'm back. And yes, you're seeing a different napkin than whenever I was in the last clip. So what I did is I went ahead and pulled that one off. And I thought I just to kind of save time on the video, I went ahead and repeated the same process for the second napkin that I was going to share with you. So this is what it looks like once you pull the paper off. And I'll do it again here on camera for you. And then you're kind of left with this excess that you just simply trim away. And I'll do that for you here really quickly. And then, um, you know, then you're left with your napkin covered cardstock that you can use for whatever project you can think of. I mean, you know, the possibilities are endless with this. Um, the video I'm going to link in the description of where um, I learned how to do this myself a, a little, uh, quite a while ago, actually, she um, shows how she made one of those really cool explosion boxes. And I thought that was a fantastic idea because she, you can customize it, you know, for a specific theme or you know, color or something like that, especially if it's like for, like, me say for like a little kid or something like that, and maybe you can't find, you know, like the Disney Frozen stuff or whatever as far as cardstock, you know, they sell those napkins like everywhere, and you can, you know, totally make customizable party decor just using napkins because, you know, you can pretty much find a lot of the mainstream stuff in napkin form, especially when it's for kids. So you just trim that away a little bit like that and then you have your napkin transferred cardstock and I think that is absolutely beautiful. Actually this is the same napkin. I meant to grab the other one. I apologize. I just realized that. I, I meant to grab this napkin half and I grabbed the other half of the same one. So just ignore me. But this is the excess. You can just get rid of that unless you can think of another creative way to use it and that's what you're left with. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly run this back over and just kind of get this a little bit pressed down. It actually works out good that I, I did that, use this twice, because that's just one less one I have to make now for this project that I'm working on next, which will be a video, of course, for you ladies, so make sure you check back for that. All right, and so now we're just going to set the iron off to the side, and then I'm just going to peel back, make sure I'm in frame here, and then I'm gonna, you can see that it's transferred onto the cardstock. And then I, you know, I've reused this probably, these sheets probably 20 times. So they're perfectly fine to keep reusing and reusing. And then you're just going to carefully pick up on to the excess part of the napkin and you're gonna see that the cardstock is indeed adhered, you know, to the napkin. Get this out of the way. And then again, I'll just cut this on camera real quick just to show you how you can cut this as soon as you are done with the transfer. So this is really fun, and I, I'm really disappointed in myself that I waited so long to actually do this project. So because it's so fun, because I just have so many more additional ideas. I feel like my brain is already overflowed with so many different crafting ideas and tutorials and projects and things like that. But this just brings it to a whole other level because you're really customizing your own cardstock material and base for your project. So just a lot of fun. Just another fun way to create your own base for your projects, especially for this whole theming for like a birthday party or something of that nature. So there you go. And then there's the scraps again. 
and then there is your cardstock. It's just really, really simple and pretty. I really like that. So we're going to go ahead and clear this away, and I'm going to share with you the projects that I made with the napkins earlier. So this is an altered, and I'm going to kind of zoom in just a little bit. Oops, wrong way, Abby. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. So this is an altered box, and I do will have a video separate on my YouTube channel specifically for this project, but I wanted to share with you quickly in this, uh, this video. This is the back of the box. I altered the front, and I used that napkin, and this is the one, and again, I'll show you which one it was. It's that beautiful magnolia napkin that I transferred on. Here it is. So this is the napkin. As you can see, it matches. And then this, I transferred onto the cardstock. And then I just distressed it. So this was really cool because I really wanted to test it out. How does it work when you tear your cardstock? When you the napkin transfer cardstock? When you distress it? When you put sprays on it? Is is a napkin going to lift and peel off of the cardstock? It did none of that. You can see that it didn't peel or bubble up at all. I even used different sprays and some distress paints. And I used um, you know my Prima etching distress tool on this and it just held up really well and it works just perfectly as regular cardstock that you would buy. So just to show you, show you some additional projects that you can make with it, I'll pull these out and share with you. These are, this is like a little gift tag that I use with that same paper line and I just tore across the top and this is another, I wanted to test this as well and I love how this looks so distressed and tattery but it didn't peel off and start to come off completely when I tore it. I love that. So here's just a little quick gift tag you can make. This is a little note card and again this is why I wanted that inside to have that texture because I just think that looks so nice on the inside. Just stamped, you know, a quick sentiment, made this a little quick note card that you can give to somebody. And then here is more of like, a, you know, an actual greeting card, a little bit bigger. Just added some different embellishments to it and then, you know, dress it up on the inside and you have your own awesome custom uh, cardstock that you've made for whatever purpose you want to use. Plus it has a really nice feel to it and I that to me is part of the crafting part. The visual, the, the textures, and the way it feels. I love that. And it gives a really nice fabric -y feel to this. So I hope you ladies enjoyed my take on this iron um, excuse me, napkin transfer iron tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions below. Also comment below and let me know if you've used this technique before in the past and what you've made or if you want to link your video or to your blog or to your photos of projects that you've made using the, the different napkins that you can purchase. So I think it's just awesome that you can take a napkin from the Dollar Tree, plastic wrap and an iron and create something like this. I just think it's awesome. So thanks everybody for watching. Happy scrapping, happy planning, and happy crafting, and I'll see you next time. Bye!